Good day and a hearty hello to all of the fine people in the land of Alamo. My name is King Barry, and I have been invited by Lady Elaine, the keeper of the royal books, to come and share some fine, fine stories with you as part of the vacation reading program. I understand Lady Elaine has told me that this summer she is encouraging everyone in the realm, large and small, old and young, rich and poor, fine and fancy to imagine your story. Well, you know there are many imaginative stories that have people like me, kings in them, so I have brought a few of my favorites to share with you in very imaginative ways. It's called Dragons and Kings and Wild, Wild Things. And now to get started, I must invite a friend of mine to help me out. Oh, Dagger, where are you? Well, there you are, Dagger. Yes, here I am. Are you ready to share some wonderful stories with these fine people out there? Of course. Did you tell them about the stories? Oh, I told them a little bit, but we can tell them more now. Well, they are going to be some of our favorite stories about dragons and kings and wild, wild things, castles and queens and crowns, a marvelous monster with wobbly wings, and a princess without a gown, a royal romance, a rollicking rumpus, a battle for bathtub glory, jesters and jousters and jostling jumpers, imagine your magical story, a dragons and kings and wild, wild things, you never know what will unwind, from an illustrator imaginings or an author's amazing mind. Oh, that was wonderful. Thank you so much, Dagger. Well, are you ready to get into our first story? Yes, it's a story about a dragon. Oh, and a king? Not quite. It's about a dragon and a knight. Oh, I think I've heard of that one. The Knight and the Dragon. Once upon a time, in a castle, there lived a knight who had never fought a dragon. Oh, I've never fought a dragon. And not very far away, in a cave, there lived a dragon who had never fought a knight. Oh, I've never fought a knight. The knight decided he better learn how to fight dragons, and so he went to the royal library and got all the books he could on the subject. How to fight dragons. And the dragon thought that he better learn how to fight knights. So he looked around through all of the things that his ancestor dragons had left in the cave. And he found some books too. How to fight knights. The knight did all the things that he had learned from the books. He made armor, he made weapons, and he practiced using them. A helmet, suit of armor, uh, lances, swords, all right, um, thrust and parry and st stab. And the dragon practiced all the things that he had learned from his books about fighting knights. Look mean, swish my tail, glare, gnash my teeth, and breathe fire. <sighs> The knight made fake dragons out of wood and practiced charging at them and attacking them. Charge! And the dragon made fake knights out of wood and practiced trying to light them on fire. Burn! But the knight just ended up getting his lance stuck in a tree, and the dragon just ended up burning down a tree. But they continued practicing and practicing until they finally were pretty good. And the day came that they decided to send letters to challenge each other. To be Dragon Esquire from Sir Knight. To Sir Knight from Be Dragon Esquire. The time came for the jousting competition. The knight was on one side, the dragon on the other. They charged at each other. Charge! <sighs> but they passed each other right by. So they turned around and tried again. Charge! 
church. <sighs> but they passed each other again, and the knight ended up in a tree surrounded by broken lances, and the dragon ended up in a lake surrounded by burning trees. Just then, along came a princess in a carriage pulled by a beautiful white horse. The carriage was full of books. It was basically a rolling library. Silly knight, silly dragon, I know what you need. You need books. And she gave them each a book. How to build a barbecue. The outdoor cookbook. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Well, they were thinking what they were thinking. And so they worked together. The knight built it, and the dragon operated it. And soon they opened K and D Barbecue. And from that day forward, for many years to come, everyone in the kingdom had the finest barbecue you can imagine. Thanks to the knight and the dragon. The end. And if you like that story, you can find it in a wonderful book called The Knight and the Dragon by Tommy DePaola. And you might have heard of Tommy DePaola. He has a lot of great children's books out there. He wrote Adelita, the Mexican Cinderella, and Streganona, and Jamie O'Rourke and the Big Potato, and The Legend of the Poinsettia. And I would suggest next time you have a chance to get to the library, look for this one or some of his other books. Well, let's get on to our next story. The next story is a poem, and you can find it in this book, Where the Sidewalk Ends, by Shel Silverstein. You might have heard of Shel Silverstein. He has a couple of other wonderful books of poetry, like A Light in the Attic and Falling Up and Everything on It. And he also wrote a book that many of you probably know called The Giving Tree. He wrote The Missing Piece, The Missing Piece, and The Big O. Lots of great books. Well, there's a poem in here, and it's called The Farmer and the queen. She's coming, she's coming, I said to the owl. What shall I do, what shall I do? Shall I bow when she comes? Shall I twiddle my thumbs? The owl said, Who? Can you say that? Who? Who? That owl never answers my questions, just always wants to know who. The queen, the queen, the royal queen, she'll pass by the farm today. Shall I salute her? I said to the horse. The horse said, Nay. Can you say that? Nay, nay. That horse, always telling me not to do things, doesn't really answer my questions. Shall I give her a gift? I said to the duck. Uh, a lovely memento for her to keep. Uh, uh, a peach, or an egg, or an ear of corn. The duck said, Cheap, cheap, cheap. Can you say that? Cheap, cheap. He's always telling me that my things are too cheap, but I thought those were very nice gifts. Shall I curtsy, or shall I cheer? Oh, her carriage is coming now. What shall I do? I said to the dog. The dog said, Bow! Can you say that? Bow! Bow! Oh, that dog. He said the thing that I was going to do at the very beginning. And so I did. And so she passed. Oh, tra-la-la-la-la. <gasps> she looked at me. I said to the sheep, and the sheep just said, Bah! Can you say that? Bah! 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 That sheep, never saying nice things at all, but I don't care, because the queen saw me. And that is the story of the farmer and the queen, and all of the animals he talked to. Well, that was fun. Now, our next story is about a king. 
But it's not about me. It's about another king. And it's about a king who kind of didn't know when to stop. He is an older king. And his name is King Bidgood. And one day, King Bidgood got up in the morning and he ordered the page to draw his bath. And the page, who was a young man, went down to the bottom of the castle and got hot water from the kitchen and brought it up the big stone stairs in a big, big pitcher and poured it into the bathtub. And King Bidgood got in the bathtub. Oh! Oh, and he stayed in the bathtub for a long, long time until the page came and said, King Bidgood, it's time to get out of the bathtub. And King Bidgood said, I'll do no such thing. I'll stay in the tub for as long as I please. So the page went running through the castle, calling out, Help, help! he cried as the sun came up. King Bidgood's in the bathtub and he won't get out. Who knows what to do? Well, the knight said, I do, when the sun came up. And he came to the bathtub and he said, King Bidgood, it's time to battle. And King Bidgood said, Well, come in. Today we battle in the tub. And he had the knight bring all kinds of things for battling in the bathtub, ships and soldiers. And he said, come on, let's row, we battle. And he made the knight get in the bathtub with him in all of his armor. And they played war in the bathtub. Ha 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 ha. And finally, as the water was getting a little bit cold, he said to the page, more hot water. And the page said, King Bidgood, it's time to get out of the tub. And King Bidgood said, I'll do no such thing. I'll stay in the tub for as long as I please. And the page went and got more hot water. He brought it up the stairs. He poured it in. They took out all of those fighting things. And then the page went running through the castle. And he said, help, help, as the sun got high. King Bidgood's in the tub and he won't get out. Who knows what to do? And the queen said, I do, as the sun got high. And she came to King Bidgood and she said, King Bidgood, it's time for lunch. And King Bidgood said, oh, my queen, come in, come in. Today we lunch in the tub. And he had them bring his feast into the tub, all kinds of wonderful food and drink. And he also got his wine, and he ate and ate to his heart's content. Mmm, glob, 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 yum, yum, yum. And then he said, more hot water. And the page had to go down to the kitchen and get hot water and carry it up. And when he came, he said, King Bidgood, it's time to get out of the tub. And King Bidgood said, you can say this with me, I'll do no such thing. I'll stay in the tub just as long as I please. And the page went running through the castle saying, you might know this too, King Bidgood's in the tub, and he won't get out. Oh, who knows what to do? I do, said the Duke, as the sun began to get low. And the Duke came in, and he said, King Bidgood, it's time to fish. And King Bidgood said, Come in, today we fish in the tub, trout, trout, trout. And he invited the Duke in, and they had all kinds of fish, put in the tub, and King Bidgood got his fishing rod, and he caught some fish, and they were fishing, glob, 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 in the tub, 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 and finally it got a little bit cold, and he said, more hot water, and so the page went to get more hot water, and when he came back, you know what he said, he said, King Bidgood, it's time to get out of the tub, but King Bidgood said, say it with me, I'll do no such thing. I'll stay in the tub just as long as I please. 
And the page went running through the castle, saying, King Bidgood's in the tub, and he won't get out. Who knows what to do? And the entire court, as the moon rose high, said, We do, we do. And they all came to where King Bidgood was in the tub. And they said, King Bidgood, it's time to get out. It's time for the masquerade ball. And King Bidgood said, No, come in, come in. Tonight we dance in the bathtub. And so he got ready for the masquerade ball. He put on his mask. And then he invited all of the others with their masks. The lords, the ladies, the dukes, and the duchesses. And they all came and danced in the tub just like that until they were so tired and so wet from dancing around that the entire court said, Oh, help, help! King Bidgood's in the tub, and he won't get out! Who knows what to do? And just then, the page stepped forward and said, I do! I do! And he reached his hand into the tub, and he pulled out the plug. And the water started going down, glub, 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 glub. And King Bidgood, he grabbed a towel and covered himself up, and he ran from the tub, tub, tub. And there is that story. King Bidgood's in the bathtub, and he won't get out. And if you like that story, it's in this wonderful book by Audrey and Don Ward called King Bidgoods in the Bathtub. And you might know them because they have lots of other books. Audrey Wood wrote Silly Sally and Heckity Peg. And she also wrote ah, Quick as a Cricket and many more. So next time you have a chance to get to the library, look for some Audrey Wood books. Our next story is in a very popular book that you might already know. It's called The Paper Bag Princess, and it's written by Robert Munch with illustrations by Michael Marchenko. And it's a wonderful story that I'd like to share with you today. You see, once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess named Princess Elizabeth. And she lived in a castle along with a handsome prince named Prince Ronald. Now, even though Princess Elizabeth and Prince Ronald were not brother and sister, they played all the time together. They had the same teachers, they learned the same things, and it was generally understood by all of the people in the palace that Princess Elizabeth and Prince Ronald would probably end up getting married one day. But it just so happened that one day a fierce dragon came and blew fire all over the palace and destroyed everything. <laughs> and then the dragon carried Ronald off with him back to his lair up in the mountains. And Princess Elizabeth found herself amid the shadows, amid the ashes, and she had nothing to wear because all of her gowns or her beautiful dresses had been burnt up in the fire. And so she found, as you might know, a paper bag. And she put it on and she became the paper bag princess. And she decided to go off in search of Prince Ronald. Well, she followed the trail of ashes that the dragon had left behind, scorching the forest as he went. And she went far and wide, this way and that. She had many adventures, until finally she came to the lair of the dragon. And she came to the big door of his cave, and she knocked on the door. And the dragon looked out and said, Well, who are you? Why are you here, little girl? And she said, I am Princess Elizabeth, and I have come to find my friend, Prince Ronald. Well, it's good that I've already had breakfast, because if not, I would have some yummy princess to eat. <sighs> well, I'm not afraid of you, she said, and she wasn't. She said, in fact, I have a question for you, Mr. Dragon. Oh, yes? I'd like to know, I have heard it said that you can breathe enough fire to burn down five forests. Is that true? Why, yes, it is. Oh, I'd love to see that. Would you show me? And so the dragon did. Of course, let me show you. <laughs> 
and he burnt down five forests just like that. Oh, that was wonderful. Do it again. Do it again. Can you do even more? And so he said, well, I guess so. <laughs> And he blew down seven forests, but he was tired after that. <coughs> he had barely any fire left. And she said, oh, that was wonderful. Now, I've also heard it said that you can fly around the world in five minutes. Is that true? Well, of course it is. Oh, could you show me? Well, if you must. And so he took off. And he went flying around and around and around and went all around the world. And it only took less than five minutes. And he got back up. How was that? And she said, that was great. Can you do it again even faster? Well, I suppose I can. I'm a fierce dragon. And so he took off and he flew every which way. And when he came back, oh, 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 how was that? Oh, that was great. But I'm tired. He lay down and fell asleep. And uh, Princess Elizabeth went over to him. She looked in one eye, and she waved, but she could see he was asleep. She waved in the other eye, but she could see he was asleep. And so she went over him and went into the dragon's lair to find Prince Ronald. And when she found Prince Ronald, she thought he would be very excited that she had come to save him. But she did not get the reception that she expected. He said, Well, oh, Princess Elizabeth! What are you doing dressed like that? It's disgusting. Don't you even come near me until you put on some proper clothes. And she said, You know what, Prince Ronald? You are nothing but a toad, and I am not going to marry you. <laughs> and so she didn't. And so they did not get married, and they did not live happily ever after. At least, not together. But she probably had many more adventures and lived happily ever after on her own. And that is the story of the paper bag princess. And our last story is a favorite. You might very well know it, so listen carefully and see if you recognize it. You see, the night that Max put on his wolf costume and went around the house doing mischief of one sort or another, chasing the dog down the stairs, tacking things up on the walls. His mother called him, Wild Thing! And Max looked at her and said, I'll eat you up! And so he was sent to bed without anything to eat. And there in his room, suddenly, all around him, a forest grew up from the floor to the ceiling, trees and vines all around him. It was a whole new world. And there was an ocean and a boat just for Max. So he climbed in and he sailed across a day and through the weeks and beyond nearly a year until he came to the place where the wild things are. And the wild things came out, and they roared their terrible roars. Can you roar with me? Rawr! And they gnashed their terrible teeth. Can you gnash your terrible teeth? And they rolled their terrible eyes. Can you roll your terrible eyes? And they showed their terrible claws. And Max said, Be still! And then he tamed them with the magic trick of staring into their terrible eyes without blinking. And so they made him the king of the wild things because they decided he was the wildest thing of all. And Max said, Let the wild rumpus begin! And so the wild rumpus did begin. Oh, and the wild things, they all howled at the moon. Can you howl at the moon? Ow! And they jumped up and down. Don't be too wild where you are, but go ahead and jump up and down. And they waved their arms. And they hung from the trees. And they marched. And they had Max all on their backs. And they were wild in every way. Until finally he said, Now stop! 
and he made them go to bed without anything to eat. And then Max, the king of the wild things, felt kind of lonely. And he wished to be somewhere where there was someone who loved him more than anything. And then off in the distance, from far, far away, he smelled nice, warm food. So he decided not to be the king of the wild things anymore. And he went and he found that boat. And as he sailed off, the wild things woke up and they came out. And they said, don't go, come back. Can you say that? Don't go, come back. And they roared their terrible roars. Do it with me. Roar! And they gnashed their terrible teeth. <laughs> and they rolled their terrible eyes. And they showed their terrible claws. <laughs> But Max continued sailing off beyond the year through the weeks for more than a, several days on and on until he was back in his own room where there were people who loved him more than anything and there was food waiting there for him and it was still hot. You probably know that story. It's a very famous one, a classic called Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. You might have even seen a movie of this one. Well, that is our story of Max and the Wild Things. Dagger, that sure was fun, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Well, I think we owe some gratitude to Lady Elaine and all the wonderful people in the land of Alamo. Yes, we got to share five of our favorite stories. Oh, there was the knight and the dragon, and the farmer and the queen, and King Bidgoods in the bathtub, and the paper bag princess, and also where the wild things are. Those are all wonderful, delightful stories about dragons and kings and wild, wild things. You never know what will unwind from the illustrator's imaginings or the author's amazing mind. Well, Dagger, I think now I want to encourage all of you out there in the land of Alamo, whether you can get to the library or not, to make sure to find some amazing authors and some imaginative illustrators and read. That's right. Goodbye. Goodbye.